guys, Sharon here with Rise Magic and today I'm going to be teaching you the one hand shuffle. Now this is probably one of the most critical I am better than you moves to learn. Now what I mean by that is you do the one hand shuffle and then you can just look at someone and say I'm better than you. It's worth it. But uh, I've seen a lot of other tutorials for this on YouTube but there are still some things that I want to touch and cover on because a lot of people are still struggling with it and a lot of people have personally requested me to make a tutorial on it. So let's get into it right now. All right, first things first, your hands aren't too small. Don't say that, it's not true. I see people with very, very tiny hands do the one hand shuffle all the time. Now, I can't sit here and lie to you and say it doesn't help. I would liken it to palming a basketball, all right? Having big hands is gonna help you accomplish that feat. But I also know a lot of really short people with really small hands who can palm a basketball because it's not about the size of your hands, it's about the strength of them and knowing how to grip it in the right spots. So, if you practice, no matter how small your hands are, I promise you, you'll be able to do it. Just don't give up. All right, so there are three parts to this flourisher move. That would be the one hand cut to bring the cards out, the pharaoh shuffle, and then the actual bridging of the cards to complete the shuffle. So we're gonna learn this one step at a time because each step builds upon each other. And once you learn all three, you can do the one hand shuffle. So first, you need to learn the cut. You're gonna be in an elevated mechanics grip or straddle grip with your pinky on the bottom, pointer finger on top, your middle and ring on the right side and your thumb on the left side. From here, once you're gonna in that elevated grip, you're going to take your pointer finger to the right side of the deck and put it right here. From here, you're gonna break off or pull down to get about half of the deck of cards in this type of grip. Now once you get that, you're going to want to slide almost the first part of your pointer finger into that crevice of the deck. Now this is the hardest part of the whole flourish in my opinion. You're going to have to separate the deck in two and balance this top packet on these three fingers and the bottom packet while at the same time sliding out this bottom packet with just your pointer and thumb. The sliding, the top packet will be rested on almost the nail of your pointer finger and you will slide them out in that motion. It's very hard to do in super slow motion like that. Basically what you're doing is pulling down, sliding out, and then you're in position for the pharaoh. Now the sliding out part, like I said, is the hardest part of this flourish. Because basically once you get this in there, the top packet is going to be balancing using these three fingers and it's going to be balancing on the tip of your nail of your pointer finger as you slide out that bottom packet completely independently of these three fingers in this packet with just your pointer and thumb. You're going to slide it out and once that bottom part clears, you bring it back up and connect the two pieces. So now you're in position for the pharaoh. Alright, so if you made it this far, I'm assuming that you can do this one hand cut, basically. Doesn't look good on its own, but if you can do this one hand cut with sliding that bottom part out, you will now be able to line up these two packets. Now this position isn't the easiest to get to. Um, so it's something you can even practice just putting the cards in this position without that cut so your hand can get used to it. This is where I say big hands aren't completely important because look how much space I still have in the dexterity of my fingers and I have big hands. So my hands aren't even stretched to max capacity like uh, some people do to do the shuffle. So once you have the cards here, you're being supported with your pointer finger being the pivot and your middle and ring on the right side thumb on the left side. Now these are actually closer to the top, I would say. For me, my ring finger's in the middle, middle's on top, pointer finger's in the top, middle between both packets, and thumb's also in the top. So these bottom parts are free to move. These bottom parts having space and freedom to move is critical for the farrowing action to happen. So for the farrowing move to happen, 
you're gonna wanna take your one free finger, your pinky, and put it on the bottom right of this packet. Now, what I found best for the fairway action is to kind of pull down with your pinky, pull down, and then push up to get that lead to happen. Now obviously it'll take a lot of practice to get that pharaoh consistently, but uh, it's very critical for that pharaoh to happen, for these packets to be lined up as perfectly as possible. Once again, since these fingers are at the top, it's critical to keep in mind that now these are not being gripped. The bottom of the packets aren't being pressed down and gripped. They actually have spaced pharaoh and uh, enough relaxed tension pharaoh. So you're gonna take your pinky and put it on the bottom here, like I said, pull down a little bit and then just fiddle around and push up. And you'll see as you push up and wiggle around, the cards will start to pharaoh and weave perfectly. And then you are ready to shuffle. All right, so now you should have this cut down, the pharaoh down, and now from here, where do you go? This is the fun part, obviously. You're going to take your pointer finger, which is the pivot point for these two cards intersecting, these two packs intersecting, and you're gonna push it down. So now, what you can do is use your whole hand to push together the cards while pushing down with your pointer finger. So now you're ready to do the shuffle. Now when you're starting out especially, what I would suggest is turning this upside down or sideways so that the cards can use gravity to shuffle and move together, like that. So from there, all you have to do now is remove your pointer finger from the equation and release your grip a little bit and you'll see that they'll start to weave. Now it didn't work that great because I was holding the vent for so long. So you get it like this, do the weave, push down, Get them across and then use gravity to release your pointer finger and you'll see that we starting to happen. Now as you can see when you one hand shuffle the cards are going to get a crazy crazy bow so I would suggest trying to bend them back with springs or waterfalls because if they don't have that structure of a normal playing card and they're always bent up they're not going to bridge down like they should like like that. So you get out here, open it up, pharaoh, right, push down your pointer finger, bend the cards, flip over, release your pointer finger, and then have them bridge shuffle together. All right, so now you've got the basic techniques down. We're gonna troubleshoot each of the three steps to get yours working perfectly. All right, so if you're struggling with this move, even after the first bit of instruction there, we're gonna troubleshoot together step-by-step step and make sure that you can practice it right and learn it. So this first step, if you're struggling with the, uh, the one-hand cut here, getting into this position to be ready to pharaoh, here's my tip for you. Some of you guys might hate this, but it doesn't ruin the cards, and it'll help you out. Split the deck in half, grab some tape, and what you're gonna do is tape each part of the deck in half. See what I'm saying? Get the half of the deck, and at the top of the deck, that's the critical part, the top, you're going to tape the entire packet together. So now it's one packet. Do the same to the other. What you got going on here now is basically your own version of ghetto squids. The cards will be permanently in two halves now for you to practice this move. Put the top where the tape is at the top. Now, the cards will naturally split where you need them to and give you the leisure and room to practice doing that sliding motion without the cards breaking apart. Now this isn't how I learned, but I imagine it would help 
if you're struggling, sliding this bottom packet out with your nail and moving your pointer and thumb independently of the other packet. You don't have to worry about the cards dropping. And the best part is, since the tape's at the top, remember what I said about the farrowing, is that the cards need to be free on the bottom and have space to farrow. So, the tape's at the top, with the scotch tape on the top of the deck, it still leaves you room to practice getting these two packets out. And you can still farrow the two bottom packets together. Now obviously you can't do the shuffle because the tape's attached, but uh, these picture this as like a training wheels type method to learning how to ride a bicycle. This will help you not waste time dropping cards and really focus on the movement of bringing the bottom packet out independently with just your pointer and your thumb, the top packet sliding it out across your nail and lining it up like that. This also gives you freedom to practice the pharaoh. Not the shuffle though, they'll get stuck. All right, so I've got the cards out of the tape and as promised, they are completely normal and completely functioning. No harm done whatsoever. So that we've troubleshooted doing the, uh, the packet slide out and the pharaoh with the scotch tape. Now we need to talk about the riffle shuffle part. Now I said this before, but once you get the cards bent, don't initiate the shuffle going upwards against gravity. At least turn the cards sideways, but I'd recommend you start out turn them upside down to use gravity to initiate the weaving and shuffling motion. Now, as I said before, doing this move over and over again will put an upwards bow in your deck. Uh, some people like it, some people don't, but you can obviously reverse that by doing lots of springs, waterfalls, anything that will help reverse that bow so the cars will stay as straight as possible. All right guys, that's all we got for you today. Be sure to like this video if you liked this move and tutorial, the style of it, the editing, all that stuff. And be sure to subscribe because we're nearing in at 10,000 subscribers, which absolutely blows my mind. And once we hit 10,000, you know we got another big giveaway for you guys featuring one of these decks of cards. Focus, yeah, sick. You can hit pause on that if you want. Check out all the options. Let me know in the comments which one you want me to give away. Might do more than one. Might be pretty crazy if you're into that. All right, guys, peace out.